Hey y'all, um, Crazy Mama Kelly here, coming at you from my part of PA. Well, it's been a while since I made some videos. Sorry about the hold up, folks, but you know, people get busy. But this little tale, out of the great big book of everything, is called The Monks of... Um, Wise Hecaton? The Monks of Wise Hecaton. Okay, um... It was um, down near Fairmart on the Greenway of Philadelphia. This happens in Philadelphia, Fairmart Park. I'm not far, far from the creek of West of Hecton. Is um, a bunch of streets, and they got peculiar names to them. Um, one, for instance, is called <clears throat> Hermit Street, um, Hermit Terrace, and Hermit Lane. The reason why they have these names is after of you know, the story begins, the reason why how these streets got their name was from, I uh, started that around in June of 1694, and it was a brotherhood of German mystics set up shop on the bank of the West Hecken. Um, the leader's name was Jonas Kelpsis, 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 <coughs> excuse me, you know, got a frog in my throat. Um, what they did is they were a very religious sect. They practiced medicine, um, music, and good old, you know, magic. Deep in the woods, um, to this day stands a remnant. The only remnant they have is like a little cave, um, little cave cabin thing. Um, they have things up erected around the area to show you exactly where they were, like a little monument set up. Um, they were a very solitary sect. They really didn't, they were, um, university educated men. Um, they, what they did was they tended to the sick and they studied a lot and they practiced, um, you know, and they used, practiced magic, you know, and they used their, um, musical skills to help make a eulogy for the services for the anti-baptists and anabaptists and lutherans in germantown and philadelphia um the brother they were like i said they're extremely solitary group um it had many names but one of the names they were known for was the woman of the wilderness which makes kind of weird sense because you know if you think about it um there were a bunch of men but the reason why they had that was um they picked it from a character um, out of the Book of Revelations. I haven't really looked this up, but, you know, I should, probably should, like everybody, you know. Um, which kind of is interesting because um, anybody who knows anything about Philadelphia, they know it's called the City of Brotherly Love. But the real reason why so Philadelphia, I guess, is named that is because William Penn used to read the Revela Book of Re Revelations himself. And he got the name from there, and I guess it was from a Middle Eastern city. There was a Middle Eastern city back in the Bible days, ancient Bible days, um, named Philadelphia. So that's why William Penn, William Penn picked the name for Philadelphia. Okay, but funny part about this is the mystics were in an area of, kind of an area of Philadelphia, but they really, the sect, didn't go into the cities. They didn't like the cities. They're a very solitary group. And what they were known for is they were waiting the imminent coming of Judgment Day. They were waiting for the end of the world. Um, they were waiting for the rapture. And they used to use telescopes and all that jazz to and first watch for signs of the rapture. Um, they practiced numerology. They also practiced astrology and alchemy. And near the monastery there was a uh, erected a tamp uh, cross with a heart within it you know and uh, a lot of people took that for the rosicrucian symbol but on the eve what they're really known for too one of the things they're known for is on the eve of saint john's the baptist day around the time of summer solstice you know they celebrated a festival that some people still believe that they, back then they saw angels happen. Um, 
But the interesting thing about this, in 1708, um, their founder, the hermit um, Kelpis, he came down with uh, pneumonia from living in the cold cave dwelling. What he did, you know, I mean, winter's Pennsylvania, everybody knows it gets really, really cold. And legend goes is that he became terminally ill and then laying on his deathbed, what he did is he handed one of his assistants, uh, Daniel Grisher, a locked box full of magical artifacts. And um, he had strict instructions to go to the Skullkill River and to throw it in the river. And the assistant, you know, didn't feel like he should because he thought, well, you know, these secrets I keep them for myself, you know, and, uh, you know, help out the masses. You know what I mean? Why do we have to throw all these magical artifacts into the river? But, so what he did was he did, went ahead and buried them on the shore near the river. And he went back to his master and he told him I did what she told me to do. And the master knew that he didn't do it. So, Grisher decided, well, better go do what my master told me. And when he did, what happened was he threw the locked box into the water of the Skullkill River and a huge explosion happened. Huge. And a lot of people were freaked out. Because that's exactly why Culpus knew that Grisher didn't do it. Um, you know, it was, um, and naturally because of the group's reputation, everybody thought maybe, maybe that, um, the box contained the Philosopher's Stone, you know, um, Harry Potter that could give, grant you everlasting life or the Holy Grail. Um, and legends say that... If it still should be at the bottom of the Skulkill River, this locked box containing supposedly a Philosopher's Stone or the Holy Grail. Well, what happened in the, the Brotherhood after um, Colpus's death? Well, it dwindled dramatically, and the worldly concerns about everything uh, finally took its toll on it and almost destroyed it. Um, but some of the monks stayed around, and they provided services, you know some of which seemed out of place for holy men. <laughs> um, they exercised demons, they did horoscopes, and some could even travel outside their bodies. And there's one guy, um, this comes from the book of the Priests of Provincial Pennsylvania. Uh, it's This book is written by Julius Sessures, Sesher, and it said that this Conrad Mathis uh, could travel outside his body. So what he did is he went to this captain, the captain's wife, you know, in 1740, and she, um, she seen what he could do, and she asked him if he could tell her when her husband's ship would be coming about. You know, when it would be returning home, because she was worried about her husband being away. And so what Mathis did is he went into a chamber and he laid down, and for at for and was in a trance for about an hour, and when he woke, he had news that her husband was in a coffee house in London. And it's kind of funny because the captain remembers um, seeing this person, um, an apparition of this person or whatever, um, because he walked up to this people, <laughs> this got the captain, and he. Um, started reprimanding him for not writing to his wife to let him know that he was okay. So that's kind of interesting. You know, um, you know how things are when you, you know, just be in two places at once. Some people say that could happen. Um, you know, with uh, time travel and, you know, everything else, or out-of-body experiences, that's pretty interesting stuff. Um, today... Very little remains of um, these people, the hermits. And that's why the streets are named after them down in Philadelphia, is to commemorate these, this brotherhood. Um, but I guess... I guess you can go... It says, if you walk through the woods near Hermit Lane, you will stumble upon the stone hut of, that legend calls the Cave of Kelpis. 
Um, they say that he lived and meditated there, and apart from other monks, to get to get away from his brotherhood, he'd go there alone a lot by himself. And uh, it's supposed to be a mark in his burial place. The Rastacrucian Society erected a monument beside the stone bat hunt back in 1961. Um, a side note, some people claim that on the night when you walk down the trail next, next to Wise a heck in Rick Creek, you can um, sometimes see six men in brown cloaks walking around doing their thing. Um, you know, just that the ones that stayed, you know. And the Rosicrucians pay homage to Kelpus's memory. Um, but there's um, unofficially, I guess, a pedestrian walk beside the Hex Christian Creek is unofficial is a, unofficially but universally known as the Forbidden Drive. So if anybody's down there near Washington, near the unofficial name Forbidden Drive, or the pedestrian walkway near the Wise Heckin Creek, um, go see if you can find that little uh, little old cave dwelling of Culpuses. Pay some homage, because he was a really cool dude, it sounds like. I mean, most people wouldn't think of monks to practice magic and whatnot, alchemy, but teach your own, would, right? Well, I know it's been a while since I've been on here, but that's all I have to say for this um, episode of Weird PA. Um, like I said, um, if you don't mind me telling you these stories, um, you can always go out and buy, buy the book yourself. Um, it's called Weird PA. It's a pretty damn good book. But I'm going to continue the stories at present. Um, hopefully, like I said, maybe my family and me on our journeys, we can go down and um, come to certain areas around PA and show you what's new and what's hopping. Alright, so thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed and you're interested in subscribing, go ahead and down below. Subscribe, please. That would be awesome. And I want to thank everybody who's been watching my videos. I really appreciate it. And thanks for cheering me on. Um, like I said, I'm relatively new at this. And hopefully with the years passing by, I'll get better. Um, once I finish with Weird PA, I'm sure I'll still be around um, telling you little folk tales, little stories that I find interesting. And maybe one or two pagan stories or whatever. Alright, well, like I said, blessed be and keep cracking and... Thanks for watching. All right. Peace. Bye.